Have you ever wondered what is the all important concept that computing services powering your favorite apps share with the shipping industry? The containers. Welcome to TechBuy. To understand how containers are a link that is more than superficial and namesake, let's start with shipping industry and issues it faced in the early 20th century. The shipping industry prior to mid-20th century was in chaos. It was not keeping up with the ever so globalized trades and their shipping demands. The logistic of goods were not standardized. Often, such transportation had to span across sea and then often on to land and vice versa. Early 20th century packaging included barrels, sacks and pallets. However, such packaging is not meant to provide a uniform packing in a confined space, the ship. This often led to inefficient use of space. Low density packing means lower return per voyage. Goods packaging itself became the structure that provided the rigidity required to stack items on top of another, often all the way from the bottom of the ship to the ceiling of the storage compartment. In many cases, it also restricted how much you can stack on top of another. This made the packaging of individual goods expensive and led to loss of goods due to damage. Low density packaging led to low ROI per voyage and high damages led to increase of shipping insurance and consumer cost. When transporting goods, often different types of items demanded different types of climate control. This was practically non-existent back then. When goods are packaged to survive a voyage on a ship on the sea, they often became cumbersome to be transported on the land, requiring repackaging and adding to the cost. There were myriad of issues along these lines that demanded an urgent solution to these problems. The dawn of containers as we know it today started along the same period as these issues in the shipping industry became hard limiting factors of globalized trade. However, containers have not been standardized until after the Second World War by 1956, at which time the steel containers as they are known today were born. These containers pretty much addressed all the issues that had plagued the shipping industry till that point. They have come to be called intermodal containers, meaning they allowed the transportation of goods across different modes of transportation such as land and sea, not requiring any repackaging in between them. There are sound engineering concepts that underpin the design goals of these containers. As we will see later, they will also emerge in the computing industry. Let's start with the density issue. With the introduction of containers, achieving density is now only restricted by the volume and the weight carrying capacity of the vessel involved and not on the packaging of the individual items getting transported. Separation of concern, which is one of the key universal engineering design principles, is achieved by separating how goods are packaged from how they are transported. The structural rigidity of containers now allowed a much larger stacking capacity without damaging the goods in them. Quality of service is achieved by packing the goods requiring different climate controls in climate controlled containers and kept in different temperatures. Granular isolation domain meant the shipments destined to the port of Singapore do not need to be mingled up with the item destined for the port of Amsterdam. Containers provided mutually independent isolation domains for security, quality of service and handling such as packing, tracking, loading and unloading, also known as bulk breaking, a very labor intensive operation in the previous eras of shipping. Pretty much the entire life cycle management of goods transportation, if you will, has now become uniform and easier to be planned ahead. Furthermore, containers themselves became the unit of scale for many things in the shipping industry. Effectively, containers became the unit of measure and scale used to define the shipping routes, vessel capacity, port capacity and trade themselves. The ships carrying these containers are called container ships and their capacity is measured in what is called 20-foot equivalent units, a TEU. 20 feet here refers to the length of the standardized intermodal container. Now that we have gone through the problems and solutions that the invention and introduction of containers have successfully addressed in the shipping industry and the universal engineering design principles behind them, let's see how a technology called containers is powering your apps and what the parallels are. In doing so, we are going to show you it is just more than a namesake. Let's begin. If you are somewhere within 10 mile radius of a software engineer working on a used to be good piece of code or software, you may often hear their passionate point making about the need to containerize the development, release and deployment of such software. Uh, there are special cases based on the type of software, but in most cases, if you are developing backend software that is meant to run on a server based as opposed to serverless computing platform and not leveraging a container, then please do call the emergency services. It is a disaster waiting to happen. So what are they referring to here as containers? 
If you click on an icon of a favorite app running on your iPhone, it wakes up and makes calls to what engineers call the backend. It is the heavyweight counterpart of the apps installed on your phone. Without them, your apps cannot work most of the time or even get an update on a, say, social media feed. This backend has long history of evolution of its own and its own problems. In physical form and at the very top level, these backends are called data centers. For example, a backend of an app running in your iPhone may have its backend running in a Google data center, also known as the cloud. Google's data center locations are around the globe and growing by the year. One level deeper, in each data center, there are what we call server racks. On these racks, there are several blade servers. Each of these blade servers is a mega sized up version of your laptop computer. Each of these can handle enormous computing demands, but how to ensure their full capacity is leveraged is the very same density problem the shipping industry has faced. Same as the sacks and barrels of the early 20th century shipping industry, the backend software of the computing industry also saw its own varieties as how software was packaged and run in a, on a physical machine. Same as the shipping industry, the computing industry has been plagued by the same low app density, lack of separation of concern, lack of quality of service guarantees, and scalability issues. As a solution to this, there emerged a technology called containers. It enabled the developers to put everything they need for their software in a single steel box, if you will, and run it on a physical machine, the blade servers. The host operating system on a physical machine knows, like a ship and its handling crew, how to stack these containers and how to divide and distribute the underlying resources such as microprocessor, time, memory and network bandwidth. What this meant was, in that steel container box of theirs, the software engineers had the freedom to choose the programming language of their choice, technology stack of their choice and do whatever they wanted to do without affecting the other containers running beside them just like the shrimps in one shipping container right next to a shipping container full of Lamborghinis. This is the separation of concern design principles we have seen with the shipping containers. Same as the shipping containers, the containers in the computing world also provide isolation domains and quality of service guarantees for their contents, in this case the software running in them. They also have become the unit of scale for the backend services. This is how the backend services of popular social media applications are scaled at the planet level. In a sense, containers of computing industry can also be called intermodal. They do not need to know about the physical configurations of underlying hardware they are running on. They can run on a laptop and they can also run on a blade server in a data center. So the parallels are striking, are they not? Well, they are. But when you take the other technologies in the ecosystem and their names and functions into account, you will see the computing industry and shipping industry mutually share the design as inspirations. The structure of the problem and the very same underlying engineering design principles of these solutions make it feasible. For example, one of the popular implementations of container technology is called Docker. Take a look at the icon. Do you see containers on a big blue whale? Do you know in the UK and Australia, the waterfront laborers at ports who help with loading and unloading from a ship are called dockers? In the US, they are called uh, longshoremen. One of the container management technologies called Helm, a ship's steering mechanism also called Helm. The popular container orchestration layer in the computing industry, which is uh, comparable to a, a crane in a port called Kubernetes. Guess what its logo is? A Helm. These are some of the Easter eggs to enjoy. Hope we were able to provide you with unique insight into two different technologies in two different industries sharing the same engineering principles, functions, and well, the names. If you have liked it, please subscribe for future videos and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Thank you for joining us today. Bye-bye.